Um, we were supposed to have a guest today, but they had some unfortunate circumstances happen, as as does happen in qu- times of quarantine. And uh, yes, yeah, so they are not here. So what I decided to do was do another series of ghost stories for you guys. I just spit when I did that. I don't know if you guys at home could feel that. It was a lot of spit. Um, I'm going to do another series of ghost stories because we had such a surreal experience. I don't know if anyone caught the last pod. I know several of you did, but there was an orb floating through the sky in the bedroom that I'm in right now as I was telling ghost stories on this podcast. And the scary thing is, is that in all of my other podcast videos, there's no orbs. It was just the video where I'm talking about ghost shit. And I have to tell you guys, I've always had a weird, I don't know what it is, like a weird um, sort of feeling of, I don't know, like when I go to sleep at night, I feel like I die. I know this sounds really stupid, but when I go to sleep at night, I feel like I die. And when I come, when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I'm like thrown back into my body. It's really crazy. I have like very insane nightmares every night. Um, For instance, I had a dream last night that I was in a haunted house And there were demons in the house and they kept trying to steal my soul and they were chasing me all around the house. And then there was also angels, but there were more demons than angels and the angels were trying as hard as they could to fight these demons. But I woke up before I found out what happened. Hopefully the angels won, even though it wasn't looking like it was in their favor, but it was really stressful. And I wake up very tired every day because I have nightmares almost every night. So... Um, I've always had like a weird feeling that like, I'm like, oh, I feel like I, when I, when I go to sleep at night, I go into the spirit world. And then during the day I wake up and come back to this world and it's very, very exhausting. And I know that sounds like something a crazy person would say, but, um, yeah, it's very real for me. And I don't know if anyone else feels that way. Um, and when I was younger, I've told this before on the pod, I used to, this is when I was literally like seven and eight years old. There was a graveyard by my house when I was younger and I used to literally leave the house at like four o'clock in the morning just as like the sun was coming up and like it would be like 5 a.m. by the time I got there and the sun was starting to rise and I would go lay on the grass in the in the graveyard because it was so bouncy I liked how bouncy it was and I would always sleep by this like little boy's grave who had passed away at like two years old and he had a picture on his gravestone And I would watch the sunrise and, you know, just normal stuff that other seven-year-olds have done, I'm sure. Not really. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, so I feel like I've always had, like, a weird, I don't know. I've had a weird um, connection to sort of the spirit world. I feel like they're always around and, you know, I kind of always feel their presence. Um, but with that said, let's jump into it, shall we? I just kind of wanted to preface that so you guys are like, why why all this ghost stuff so randomly? But I do love hearing your worst first ghost stories because it does make me feel comforted that I'm not like the only one who believes in this stuff. And I know a lot of people don't. But um, I don't know. I think it's something that you just feel. And I did notice that like when I started taking my antidepressants, I definitely felt more blocked like I don't have that sort of um connection I feel that I used to which is interesting and I've heard that from other people so yeah okay so let's get started oh my god there's so many this is going to be a long pod Woo. okay so let's start with the space ranger Uh, on Instagram. She says, hi, I just watched your podcast on ghost stories. So entertaining. Me and my wife love your content. But anyway, I don't know if you're still interested in ghost stories, but I have an encounter that I think of frequently. One night in my junior year of high school, I was woken up by a stomach ache and I was feeling off like I was very seasick. As I stumbled to the restroom, I noticed it was unusually silent, like dead silent, no crickets, nothing. There was nothing stirring in the night, which was very strange for a spring night in Texas. My cats weren't moving or making noise like they usually did. It was just this bizarre, heavy, deep silence. After I went to the bathroom, I walked back out into my hallway to be greeted by the most awful smell. 
It smelled like rotten meat and farts. It was so disgusting. I thought I shit myself, but thankfully I didn't. <laughs> I chalked it to down I chalked it up to maybe the dog got sick and left a present on the puppy pad. As I reached my bedroom doorway, all the little hair on my body stood up and I suddenly became alert to danger in my room. I took a step into my dark room and in the corner standing on my flat screen TV pitch black was a pitch black silhouette of a man or something. It felt so ominous. I felt so terrified. I stayed in the living room that night and didn't sleep at all. My family has ties to Santeria and cursed land in Quintero, Mexico. As a child, I would see the devil frequently. Haven't seen anything like that in my 20s. If you read this, thank you. I love you guys. You and Tommy, you guys are rad. Whoa, dude. I mean, I don't know about this Santeria and cursed land in Mexico, so that'll be something to look up. But he walked into a dark room and in the corner, standing on the flat screen TV, a pitch black silhouette of a man. Oof, it's always like a pitch black silhouette of a man or somebody ominous. Ooh, very, very creepy. Oh, thank you, the Space Ranger. That was very intense. Um, wow. Yeah, I feel like it's always some kind of creepy man, and uh, that is a frequent thing. Um, okay, so here's another one. This is from Kiss Crew on Instagram. She said, okay, so I live in Sweden, and I'm 15, soon to be 16, and finishing ninth grade this year and when, and starting high school. When I was in like third or second grade, I went to a different school. I knew that people said that the school had a ghost, but I didn't really believe them because it was this janitor ghost thing that sounded much like just something made up in the movies to me. But one day I was sitting in one of the groups with my two guy friends working on a project when the lights suddenly went out. And when the lights went out, all the students and teachers were supposed to go to the soccer field to meet up. But the three of us were inside. We opened the door to the group room, a, gla a glass door that you could slide. We went out into the corridor. It was pitch black. Everyone had left outside to the soccer field. You could barely see anything. And the corridor was so long. So the three of us took each other's hands because we were like 9, 10, and 11 years old, which seemed to help. And we started to w slowly walk down the corridor to make our way outside, passing by each of the closed classrooms. But as we were halfway through the corridor, we got to the mini library study space and we all froze. At the end of the corridor, we could see a man. But he wasn't standing on the floor. His legs were floating and he didn't have any feet. His body just sort of faded out. It looked like he was in his late 30s, early 40s maybe. I can still see his face so clearly. Oh shit. Okay, weird shit keeps happening during every time I do the ghost podcast. My my I was just telling this story about these this girl who was in you know, you just heard it. She was in the school uh, and the you know, the lights all went out and everyone was supposed to go to the soccer field and as soon as I was getting the part about the ghost, the phone that I'm using to record this started ringing even though I have it on do not disturb mode, which is really insane. Anyway, wow. Okay, so anyway, she said that he wasn't standing on the floor. His legs were faded out and he was floating. He looked like he didn't have any feet. He looked like he was in his late 30s, early 40s maybe. I can still see his face so clearly, she said. He just stared at us with a small smile. He came towards us super slowly. I don't think he wanted to hurt us or anything, but we were so scared and he was kind of light greenish dark. If you could slightly see through him, you could hear man's footsteps, even though he didn't have any feet. My friend who walked first, I was in the middle, whispered, guys, hide. He was so scared. We all were. So we hid behind bookshelves, holding each other for what felt like an eternity as the footsteps got closer. Then out of nowhere, all the lights went back on and we could hear our teacher's voice calling out for us. To this day, we still don't speak much about what happened. I know they were both just as scared as me and that they both remember it, but we don't really talk about it. I've told some people at school and told our teacher, and everyone says the same thing, that we were just imagining stuff. But I know I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. We all do. I believe in ghosts, and I will always since that day. 
Wow. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, hopefully we won't get disturbed again. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, here's the next one. This is from C-Ray76 on Instagram. I know I'm a little late to this, but I watched your first ghost encounter, so I thought I'd at least write in and tell you mine. When I was maybe eight years old, I stayed the night at my friend's house, and it was a two-story house. The garage was the first story, and you could walk up the stairs and enter the living room kitchen. There was no way to, there was no wall to connect them. Then the rest of the house was down the hallway. Anywho, I stayed the night, and my friend and I were sleeping in the living room on her couch when I woke up in the middle of the night to what I thought sounded like a little kid running up and down the hallway. I didn't really think anything of it because my friend had a sister who was a year or two younger than us, so I figured it was her. When I went up to look, no one was there. I got pretty spooked since I was pretty young myself, being only eight years old, but I just brushed it off and tried to go back to sleep. It wasn't until maybe five minutes later that I heard chains being dragged across the floor, like heavy-ass chains, that whatever was pulling them was having them a hard time. I was trying to rationalize what was going on, saying to myself that my friend has dogs. Maybe the dogs are in the house wearing chains, even though that really made no sense. All this was going down, and I'm trying not to shit my pants or get out of the bed. I tried to kick my friend awake, but nothing. I pulled the covers over my head and waited until the morning. It wasn't until the next morning when I asked my friend's mom if my friend's sister had ever run around the house at night. Her mom said that they locked their little daughter in her room to keep her from sneaking into her parents' room. Oh, that ruled out her walking around upstairs. Also, the dogs could, that could have potentially made the chain noise were outside the entire night, and they didn't have chains. They were on ropes. Needless to say, I never stayed at the house again because to this day, that shit still scares me, and it's almost been 20 years. Wow. Wow. That's the crazy thing. I think sometimes you hear things and you keep trying to rationalize with yourself, you know, oh, it's this or oh, it's that. And it's weird because it's not. And your brain just keeps trying to go, oh, no, like that makes sense. And it doesn't. But you just keep trying to make it make sense because you're too freaked out. Oh, Nina. I know. It's scary, Nina. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. She's, this is from Jen Rose P. Hi, Brittany. I don't know if this is where we submit our ghost stories, but I have one. Might not be as exciting as some others, but here we go. We moved into a house when I was 15, knowing the previous older an owner, an older woman, had died not long before. Immediately, I felt a strange vibe. It was weird. It wasn't long before lights started turning on and off on their own. What happened next was truly frightening, though. We started to hear banging on the walls at different times of the day. And at first, it wasn't too loud. My mom told us it was probably something in the attic, like a rodent or something, because she hadn't had an exterminator out yet. Nothing, though. Not even droppings. Oh, it says, it says my mom told us it was probably something in the attic, like a rodent, a rodent, but she had an exterminator come out, and he found nothing, not even droppings. So that's when we all started to freak out a bit. One night, not too long after that, we were all at home, my mom, my brother, my sister, and me, and the wall banging got loud, like there was something trying to get our attention and make itself heard. It got so loud that our Rottweiler got scared. It sounded like someone was trying to take the wall down. We all gathered in my brother's room where the sound was coming from, and my mom shouted at it to be heard. My mom shouted at it to be heard because it was so loud. I don't remember exactly what she said, but my mom pretty much shouted for it to leave. She said that it had to go. The sound stopped and it never happened again. I swear this happened and it freaks me out to this day thinking about it. Love your show. Yeah, I mean, they say that if you do experience this, you're supposed to stand your ground and you're supposed to say, leave, get out of here, you know, because a lot of the times it's hard. I mean, I've had people message me and say, like, you know, it's really hard to differentiate between, you know, what is a spirit and what is a demon and what is this and what is that? And I know some people listening to this might not even believe in those things, but I do. And um, sometimes demons or, you know, maleficent creatures will try to mimic people that you used to love, loved ones, because they just want 
attention. And when you give them attention, they feed off your energy and become stronger. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of bizarre. It takes a lot of energy though, for a ghost to move something and to make a noise. So when it's a lot of crazy activity, that's, you know, frequent, that's when they start to say it's like a poltergeist or something evil because it takes a regular ghost a lot of energy apparently to move something from what I've read. Um, yeah, very, 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 very scary. Um, this one's kind of sweet. This is from Blondie345. She said, when you talked about hearing Maggie Poos, my my dachshund who passed away in the last episode, I, I told a story about her. She said, it reminded me of hearing my dog, it reminded me of hearing my dog that had passed away. I have hardwood floors and my precious Sheltie that I had since I was 12 passed away when I was older. I got another dog a year or two later. One night I heard nails walking on my floor, three steps. I looked to see what my dog was doing and he was asleep on my bed. I thought I was crazy, but I've heard this a few times now. One night my older sister was sleeping in my bed and we were just starting to fall asleep and then we heard it again, the three little steps, the nails on the floor. She's never believed in ghosts or anything, but that night she definitely believed it. She said, what's that? And then we both looked and saw that my dog was on the foot of the bed. She said, I, to I, t I said that I hear it sometimes, Heidi. I felt so validated at that point that someone else had heard it too. Wow. Yeah, I think, you're, I think your pets come visit you guys for sure. I really do. I think everyone does. I think your, your ancestors visit you. I think your dogs visit you. I think everybody does. I think we're all going to find out one day that, I mean, I don't know, at least maybe we'll find out that when we pass away, our energy is just floating around us at all the times. And like your grandmother or grandfather could be sitting next to you right now and you have no idea, you know, it's just like in the air or something it could be just, just, they could just be there. I don't know where we go after this, but I definitely think it's somewhere. I mean, you can't get rid of energy. You can't kill energy and we're made of energy. Energy doesn't die. It just changes form. That's just physics. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. Let's see what's next. Okay. Do, do, do. There's so many, you guys. Okay. Here's another one from Brooke Evelyn Gale. What a pretty name. Um. Wow. Hey, Brittany, I love your podcast. I watched Worst First Ghost Stories, and I could not stop watching Nina. She literally would not take her eyes from whatever she was looking at. Gave me chills. Totally. I mean, look how Nina naturally is right now. She's just passed out. So she was totally staring at something. If you guys watched the last episode of Worst First Ghost Stories, it's pretty intense. Okay. So she said, if you're doing a part two, I'd love to submit my story. These are all true stories from when I was younger. And this is from Brooke Evelyn Gale on Instagram. She said, when I was 13 years old, we moved to a house that was about 100 years old. Both my parents were cops and would often work long night shifts and get home in the evening, so I would be home a while by myself on school for some days. My best friend lived across the street. One night while I was waiting for my parents to get home, my friend calls me and says, I know where you are right now. I know that she was just trying to freak me out, and I played along and said, yeah, where's that? We had three bedrooms upstairs, each with a window that faced the road. She goes, you're in the middle bedroom. I go, no, I'm in the living room. And she laughs and she goes, why are you lying? I was super confused. She says, I just saw you. The bedroom light went on and you walked past the window. I walked over to the living room window and we looked at each other from across the street. We both went completely silent, realizing that neither of us were joking. Needless to say, I hung up the phone and booked it across the street to her place. A while later, I'm sitting in the living room one day after school. We had a large window that looked out to the front yard. Out of the corner of my eye, I see something. I turn to face the window to see a man walking past. He was so close to the window, it was like he was right up against the glass. He was staring right in at me and our eyes locked as he went by. I was so freaked out that this random man was walking across my front lawn. I just sat there in shock, wondering what the hell he was doing. Then it occurred to me that there's a garden right outside the window with shrubs and small trees, and there was really no way to walk so casually through it. 
I was so confused how he could have been that close to the window. I jumped off the couch and looked out the front door to find that no one was there. No one was even walking down the street at either way. One day, my parents were working until midnight. I turned off the TV and go to bed. 30 minutes go by and I'm laying in bed and I hear very faint voices. I head downstairs to see that that the TV is on. I'm positive that I didn't leave it on because I convinced myself, but I convinced myself that maybe the dog had stepped on the remote and turned it back on. I turned it off again and put the remote out of reach of the dog and went back upstairs. I laid in bed for a while, was starting to fall asleep, and then I hear the faint voices again. A little creeped out, I walked downstairs and the TV was on. (laughs) She's all a little creeped out. I've been so creeped out. I know there's no explanation as to why it's on, but I'm trying not to get too freaked out as I'm by myself, so I just turn it off and run back up to bed. I lay in bed for a while and I hear it again. I walk downstairs to find the TV on. I turn it back off and run back up to bed. I lay there a while again and I hear these voices. It's louder this time, like a conversation. This time I know I'm not hearing things. I know I didn't leave the TV on and I check to see that no one is home. I walk downstairs and then everything becomes quiet. I notice the kitchen light I had left on is now off and the living room lights are all on. I'm scared, but I shake it off and go back to my room. Next, I am jolted awake by my dogs barking, barking like someone's breaking into the house. I look out my window. There's no car in the driveway. I'm scared shitless, but I head downstairs. The dogs see me and stop barking, but they looked as freaked out as I am. At this point, I've had had it so much, I grab my male dog and force him to come upstairs with me. I'm laying there, wide awake and terrified. Then I hear the talking again. It gets louder and louder and louder, almost like an argument. I know my parents aren't home, but I peek out the window at the driveway just to be sure. No cars. This time, I'm absolutely not going downstairs. Then I hear a loud thud on the stairs and another and another and another. They continue like footsteps until they reach the top of the stairs. Then I hear these footsteps start coming down the hallway, slowly getting louder and louder and closer to my room. I'm literally paralyzed. I can't do anything but stare at my door. The footsteps come all the way down the hall and stop right outside my door. The hallway light is flickering and I see a shadow of something standing on the other side of my door. I'm losing my fucking mind. My dog is going crazy at the door. I start screaming at the top of my lungs to leave me alone as I'm bawling my eyes out. Then, just like that, I hear the light flick off. No footsteps, nothing, just gone. Everything stops, and the house is completely quiet for the rest of the night. I would shit my pants. Like, I would actually have shit myself. Like, there would be shit, like a pile of it. Then she says, I didn't tell my mom until years later when she admitted to me that she had her own experiences in that house. She said our dogs would often bark specifically at our laundry room door. And one day while she was in there, she turned around to see a man standing there staring at her. She said she described him as a young man with a shaved head, which is exactly like the man I saw that walked past the window that day. They did some research after leaving the house and learned that multiple people had died on the property and after the house had been built. A little girl had apparently drowned. One man who lived there was said to have jumped out a bedroom window and another one was killed in a car accident basically right in front of the house. After moving out of the house and before anyone else had moved in, my friend told me that she would often see the curtains closed and other times open when no one had been in there to touch them. She also said that one day she looked over and saw a little girl standing in the living room window. I don't care what y'all say. I believe in ghosts. A hundred thousand percent. I do not care if anyone thinks I'm crazy. I totally believe in them. I I think that people that have seen them. Oh, sorry, Nina. I just dropped my phone on her head. Oh, Nina. And I just closed my ghost story. Great. Um, I believe that people that have seen them will, you know, I believe that they have really seen them for some people. I think some people are a little bit, you know, it could be something else, but I think for some people they definitely have seen them. And I think that a lot of people are 
attached to the spirit world in some way or another. They have like a weird connection. You know, they're like really, really high empaths that can f- sense a lot of things. And some people aren't, you know. But um, yeah, I definitely believe in it. I mean, guys, come on, there's aliens. We've already heard about that. They just casually dropped that bomb on us to distract us from the coronavirus situation. So that's fun. Um, okay, this is from Trips233. Okay, this is, yeah, he said this is a ghost story. Sorry, I was just, I'm always reading their, like, introduction. They're always so sweet. Um, Ghost story from Trips233 on Instagram. He says, when I was 13 years old, I was sitting in my room reading about a meditation and decided to try it. So I closed my eyes and visualized myself being surrounded by darkness like the book said to. Five minutes go by and I hear a creaking sound. So I look up and see that the cubby door to the attic was open and swaying. Just enough to make creaking sounds at the same time. Just enough to make creaking sounds. At the same time, the dog downstairs started going nuts. And I ran to my door to run out of the room. When I turned the handle, the cubby door stopped swaying. I slowly opened my door and then the cubby door violently slammed shut right in front of my eyes. I booked down the stairs telling my parents what just happened. They screwed the cu- the cubby door shut. The cubby door was not an easy door to open or close by any means. I never meditated again. Wow. Jeez. This one's kind of funny. He he says he saw a leprechaun, so I'm not judging. Okay, he says, I have another weird ghost, strange story. I don't really think it's a ghost story, though, but it's definitely strange. He said, when I was around five or six, we lived in an old country house with a musky, unfinished basement. Love a musky basement. The basement had like a three-foot hole smashed through the brick wall, revealing a hidden room. One night after falling asleep, I woke up in the middle of the night crawling out of this hole that was in the basement wall and there was a little leprechaun that resembled a man in his like 40s a little bit taller than me not much though wearing a green ape green outfit with a top hat lined with gold we were playing hide and seek and tag he got out of breath from me chasing him and stopped and sat on an old blue cooler that sat in the middle of the room to have a cigarette and told me that I shouldn't smoke and it could kill me one day After that, after he said that, the light turned on and my mom came downstairs asking me what I was doing down there and carried me back to bed. Ooh, creepy. Smoking leprechaun, eh, kid? These cigarettes are bad for your health. I mean, I got all the gold, but I'm not going to live long to spend it because I smoke cigarettes. Um, that's scary. That's the thing that's weird is like being the, the strange thing between the strange place between dreaming and being awake because I'm like, I was telling you guys, I had that haunted dream the other night where I was in a haunted house and these demons were trying to steal my soul. And I actually sat up at one point and I'm asked, I'm going to ask Tommy to turn our, um, our ring cameras on in the bedroom again, because I sat up at one point and I opened my eyes, but I was still dreaming. And our bed doesn't have, like, this was a four-poster bed in my dream in an old room. And I opened my eyes, and I remember seeing our bed as a four-poster bed. And I was, like, trying to shake myself. And then slowly, like, I shook myself enough that I saw the four-poster bed kind of go away. And it came back to our room, which was really strange. So it was like I was still dreaming, but I opened my eyes. It was fucking weird. So that 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 can happen. Um, I also had it happen to me when I was little. Um, I saw the movie Jaws for the first time and I was so scared that I fell asleep with my eyes open, um, because I was too scared to close my eyes to go to sleep. And so I fell asleep with my eyes open and I didn't realize I was asleep and I was sitting in my bed up and I was like asleep, but my eyes were open. I know I keep saying that. And I see my room start to fill with water. And then all the walls in my room just disappear. And my bed is floating in the middle of the ocean at dusk. And I'm next to that fucking thing that the ding, ding, the buoy thing, ding, ding, and it's dinging. 
and I'm sitting there in my bed and I'm floating and I see a huge shark fin coming towards my bed. And right as soon as Jaws comes up to bite my bed, literally just eat my whole bed whole, he was huge. I go to open my eyes because I was so scared, but my eyes were already open. And so everything just kind of did the thing it did the other night where I'm kind of like this and it just, the dream, just everything comes back into focus and I'm back in my room. But the dream kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It kind of, cause your eyes are already open. So it kind of just fades away. It's strange. I don't know if it's ever happened to anyone else. It's like dreaming awake. It's very creepy. Anyway. Um, okay. So this is from Cameron Burton, 27, on Instagram. I don't know if you're still doing ghost stories, but I have one that honestly still fucks me up to this day when I think or talk about it. I have 0% doubt that not only spirits are real, but dark ones are too. Here's the story. About two years ago or so, I started falling into depression badly, and, was, and it was when I was alone. I would just get into these negative-ass moods. At the same time that this depression was happening, I started seeing this shadow figure late at night, and it had the most sinister feeling to it that I've ever felt. It would stand over me for a few seconds, and then it would just disappear. I had seen it four different times, and at that point, I was starting to think that I was going crazy between that and the depression, until my best friend's mom gave me a call. She's always claimed to be sensitive to supernatural stuff and have visions, but to be honest, I never really believed her until that day. She was asking we she, sorry, she was acting weird and asked if everything was okay. And then she started crying and she told me about a dream that she had the night before she called me. She said that she had seen me sitting in a room and described my room even though she's never been to my house and that there was a shadow person on the wall telling me all these horrible things that weren't true. She said I pulled out a gun out of my drawer that she shouldn't have known existed, that that's where I kept my gun. And she started screaming my name, but I couldn't hear her. She said that every time the figure said something else horrible to me, it would come a little closer to me putting a bullet in the gun. She said no matter how much she screamed, I just kept going until it was right on me and I was done loading the gun. She said it wrapped itself around me, and then I pulled the trigger, and she woke up. Keep in mind, she shouldn't have known any of those details. So needless to say, I started crying like a baby, and I told her I literally thought I was losing my mind because I was seeing this dark figure at night and would have horrible thoughts when I'm naturally a pretty happy person. I told my parents and my grandmother, and she told me to read Psalms 91 every day. I started doing that and praying, and I haven't seen it or had a suicidal thought since then. This was truly the most terrifying and dreadful thing I've ever experienced, and I'm super careful about the type of energy I allow myself to be around these days. I'm an empath and from a home from a home with negative energy, so I also feel that these types of spirits are drawn to us. I also grew up in a very, very negative home. And I feel like that's why a lot of neg- like weird supernatural stuff would happen because, you know, demons and, and evil spirits are drawn to that energy. There was constant fighting and screaming and chaos in my house. So they're definitely drawn to that, Cameron, for sure. Um, he said, thanks for the videos. I know this might be a little too dark to share. Nope, nothing's too dark to share on this podcast. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Cameron. That was very intense, and I'm I'm glad you've recovered from your depression. That's really, really, really crazy um, to hear. Yeah, it's it's freaky, guys. It's freaky that um, it's freaky that you know people don't believe in this stuff, and this stuff happens to people, and it's really, really weird. This is from Bailey John. Hi, Brittany. I'm a big fan of your podcast. I was just listening to your ghost stories episode and I was going to write something in, but I wasn't sure it was scary enough to do so. But when you were saying that Nina was staring into the hallway, it made me think of a story, a thing that happened to me. I'll tell you anyway. My mom and I live with my grandparents and my grandfather had COPD and was on oxygen. A few years ago, he collapsed in their bedroom and died about an hour later in the hospital. A couple times after he died, we would get calls on our house phone from his phone number. 
The first time the phone was dead and the second time his phone had been turned off by the phone company. So we don't know how we were getting calls from his number. My grandma and I have sometimes heard him yell for us and sometimes yawn. For some reason, he always tried to yawn obnoxiously loud to get us to laugh. And the part Nina reminded me of was my grandpa used to spend the day watching TV in the family room that he had built onto our house. And it is connected to the bedroom that he turned into an office. So sometimes when my mom and I would be in that room watching TV while everyone else is asleep, my dog would start growling or barking and staring into the office when no one was there. Yep. It's true. The ghosts are real. Your grandpa is there. And he is definitely watching over you. I seriously think they come back and they come back and visit us. I mean, you can't really I don't know how people cannot how can people can deny that. I mean, people like Tom Tommy thinks that like when you're dead, you're dead. That's it. Like you're just dead. But um I definitely disagree. I definitely think that um the energy goes somewhere. I don't know if it's like you have, you know, cognitive function where you're able to think and really know what's going on, but I definitely think your spirit's there. And then I also have like interesting thoughts about reincarnation, but I'm not quite sure where, um, where I am with that. Um, I had a lady write to me recently and then I'll share the story before we jump into a break. Um, Darby crash, the lead singer of the germs killed himself when he was 26 years old. Um, by suicide. So this woman wrote to me because I posted a picture wearing the germ shirt. They're like an old punk band that I like. And um, they were around a very long time ago. And so she has a son and she said her son is the reincarnation of Darby. And I thought that was so interesting. And she wrote to me and she said, you know, this is so crazy to see you wearing a germ shirt because my son is actually Darby Crash reincarnated. Um, he is about six years old and he was sitting in the back seat of the car one day and she said that he said, you know, mom, I used to be in a punk band, um, but I killed myself, but I won't ever do make that mistake again. And then one day she, he like told her like my, the name of my band was the germs and like, he'd never heard anything about them. Didn't know anything about them. Like no one listened to them. Like no one was into them in their house. And he just came out and told this to her and she sent me a picture of him and he actually kind of looks like Darby, which is really weird, like a young version. He's like six years and a six year old to say this, you know, I killed myself, but I definitely won't do that again. Creepy. Anyway, should we do worst first reincarnation stories? <gasps> if you have any, send them in. I'm trying not to have too many guests on the pod right now, you guys, social distancing, um, you know, we're trying to be a little bit compliant. So um, actually, let's take a quick break and then we will be right back with more ghost stories on Worst First. You guys, I'm actually so excited about this ad. I mean, I'm so excited about all my ads, but this is one of my personal favorites because this is a company that I work really closely with. And I use their products almost every single day. And people are always messaging me on Instagram like, what's that CBD product you talked about? Well, this is the company, Terra Vita CBD. That's T-E-R-R-A Vita, V-I-T-A CBD. And they have three different types of CBD. Well, actually, they have several different types. They have one for dogs and animals. So if you have a stressed out animal, I use one on Wiki just because he is older and he gets stressed out. And so I, I used this little bit of CBD spray on him and I asked the doctor, they said it's totally cool and it totally mellows him out, which is incredible. And so I use at home, they have focus, sleep and relax. And I love the relax one because the relax one has a thousand milligrams, full premium, um, spec, full spectrum CBD with calming terpenes and cortisol reducing ashwagandha root which I don't know if you guys have heard of ashwagandha root it's an amazing thing for anxiety even on its own so I love that one that one chills me out when I'm feeling on edge or freaking out what I do is they come in these little tincture bottles and you take the dropper and I drop it under my tongue and hold it for 90 seconds before you swallow it and then once you swallow it after 90 seconds, it's better released into your system. People tend to people tend to buy CBD and they use it the wrong way. They'll like buy a tincture of CBD or hemp oil or something and they'll put it in their mouth and they'll swallow it right away. And that's not how it works. You have to give it a chance to absorb. So you have to put it under your tongue and hold it for 90 seconds. Um, so they have a focus one that has a thousand milligrams full spectrum CBD. 
with um, brain potentiating terpenes and green tea extract. So that gives you a little bit of energy, ginseng and taurine. They have a sleep one that has the full spectrum CBD and really high quality melatonin. My husband uses that one when he can't sleep and it really helps him. So everything that's cool about this company is that it's not shady. All the products are manufactured in an FDA registered facility and are GMP compliant. Um, They use a CO2 extraction process that allows the highest potency CBD product to retain all the beneficial cannabinoids, the terpenes and the flavonoids. And they care for the planet, too, which is amazing. They All their packaging is recyclable, recyclable, compostable, and biodegradable. So I think it's really cool that um, they are sponsoring my podcast because I've worked with them for so long. And I'm so excited to, to share this with you guys because you guys are constantly emailing me and asking me what the company is that I'm working with. And it's them. And um, another thing is that on their products, they have a scannable code that can show you the lab results of each tincture. So you're not like using, you know, some shady product from God knows who made in God knows where. So I think they're great. This is the company that I love that I always talk about for CBD and that I personally could not endorse more. So if you're interested in trying it, first time customers get 40% off their order with code Brittany 40 for all US orders and you will receive a free hand sanitizer with purchase. I'm so excited to share that with you guys. I really hope it helps you in whatever ways you need. Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Worse First. Um, I have a fun new product for you. Okay, so I personally hate going to the grocery store right now. I've always hated going to the grocery store. I hate making lists. I hate planning what I'm going to have for dinner, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of companies out there that do this like at-home meal option thing. But this company called Sun Basket, I really, really love. I think they are fantastic, healthy, delicious meals, which are perfect for the times that we are living in right now. It's like the perfect solution. Um, You can go on their website, sunbasket.com, which is S-U-N-B-A-S-K-E-T.com. Check out what they have to offer. I mean, the food is healthy, delicious. I mean, they have all kinds of different dietary preferences, including paleo, gluten-free, Mediterranean, vegetarian, whatever you might like. I personally enjoyed ordering a roasted salmon dinner, which was insane and healthy, and it really helps take the guesswork out of what you're going to have for dinner for your family. Um, It's organic produce, the clean ingredients, and things are ready in less than 15 minutes. So what can you say? I mean, it's really the best thing for you and your family right now. You don't have takes the guesswork out of eating healthy and having to go to the grocery store and know that you're getting good uh, quality ingredients. And you can skip weeks whenever you want. I mean, if you see a bunch of stuff on the menu you're not interested in, go ahead and skip that week. I mean, it's just kind of takes it all out and it's great. It saves you money. But speaking of saving money, I am offering you $35 off your order when you go to sunbasket, that's S-U-N-B-A-S-K-E-T dot com slash worst, W-O-R-S-T and enter the promo code worst W-O-R-S-T at the checkout and you will get $35 off your Sunbasket order, okay? So that's sunbasket.com slash worst. Enter the promo code worst at your checkout and get $35 off your first Sunbasket. Cancel at any time. Give it a try. It's worth a shot. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, back to the pod. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, I feel really weird today and I don't know if it's like because we're just sharing ghost stuff. I don't think so. I kind of woke up feeling weird like a weird chest pain, my anxiety per usual, my cardiologist swears. If I ever drop dead, this is proof that I told you guys I have chest pain. Um, It's weird. I woke up. It's a gloomy day. It's been creepily gloomy lately. And um, yeah, I just woke up in kind of a weird mood. Weird, weird place. Um, Yeah. And then we, I was like, let's do ghost. And then my friend had a family a tragic family emergency which I don't want to share on here he was supposed to be my guest on the pod today tragic family emergency and I'm not going to say what happened but um that's why he couldn't come do the podcast and kind of just set the tone for like a really dark day anyway okay so this next story comes from Peyton Shea um she said this is my worst first ghost story it starts off at my aunt's house One day I was there for a visit and she told me a couple times that she'd seen ghosts in her kitchen. 
I never thought anything of it because she was a little crazy, but you know. (laughs) Anyways, it was about a few weeks ago when I went into the kitchen to get a glass of water at midnight. She said, because it do be like that though. Then all of a sudden I hear a small thud. I look around. I didn't see, see anything, so I thought it was the neighbors. My aunt lives in a duplex. My aunt was in the living room, and she asked if I was okay. I said that I was fine, and it was probably the neighbors. After I'm done getting the water, and as I'm taking a drink, I see a shadow on the wall. The shadow was about five feet tall. It moved from the wall to the ceiling. My mind was going batshit crazy, so I scream and go to the living room. My aunt asks what happened. I told her that I saw a shadow move up the wall. She laughs. She walks into the kitchen, and I'm behind her, and then all of a sudden, one of the cupboards slam. We didn't see it, but we definitely heard it. My aunt yells, oh, hell no. Her dog, a husky named Charlie, starts whimpering nonstop, and it went on for the rest of the night. I stayed up until about 5 a.m. the next day. Did I read that story on the last podcast? Because that sounds familiar. Oh, I couldn't know if she sent it a week ago. Sounds like a story I read on the last podcast. That's so crazy. Yikes. Yeah, that's scary. There's a lot of like drawer slamming, you know, closet slamming, that kind of thing. Really, 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 really scary. Ghost stuff, moving things. Okay, let's see. I have a lot of people also write to me about anxiety, which is totally fine. And I do try to respond to you guys as much as possible. Um, Yeah, I try to write to you guys as soon as possible. But then and then now that we're getting in a mix of anxiety and uh, ghost stories, which I feel like kind of go hand in hand. Um, Let's see. I also have a lot of people that are dating people that are older than them. And they keep saying to me, uh, you know, do you feel awkward dating someone older than you? And I'm like, no, because my husband acts like he's seven. So that's totally, there's a lot of those messages. I'm dating someone who's, you know, 20 or 15 years older than me. And it's, you know, does it make you feel weird? And I'm like, no, if it makes you feel weird, then you shouldn't be dating them. But for me, no, it doesn't at all because my it's all about the person's mentality age is literally a number i mean someone can be my husband's age and have a mentality of like a 21 year old um okay so this is from ash benner she said if you're still looking for ghost stories i have an interesting one i bought a house moved in and was trying to get settled after a few weeks one of our friends asked us how we feel about living in a haunted house uh what (laughs) they're like what, you guys never saw that movie? And she was, she said, I was so confused. I find out the family that lived here called a ghost hunting team and shot a whole damn movie in our house about it being haunted. It was never disclosed to us by our realtor. You can rent the movie on Amazon Prime if it's still up. It's called A Haunting in Saginaw. It's part of a series of movies shot in the area about different haunted buildings. I'm too scared to watch it myself, and I'm still bitter about the whole thing. Supposedly, she found an an antique gardening tool that brought ghosts into the house, and they hurt her kids and terrified the family. You know, and I wanted to ask her. I never responded. Have you ask her right now? She probably won't get back. Have you seen or heard anything? That's crazy. Oh, my God. I would have to watch the documentary. What willpower she has. I would be like, uh, let me see what's going on here. How do you just how do you just not watch a documentary about your house that has that's haunted? I mean, it's kind of smart, I guess. That way you don't like bring the energy there. But wow. Okay, maybe she'll respond before we're through with the pod. Okay, this is from Little Angel 03. I have a ghost story. So my aunt's husband died and she lives alone in this creepy ass house that's in the middle of nowhere and like multiple times her husband's ghost she thinks is there. He spills water and writes with it on the table. Like one time he wrote hi and another time he put a heart shape. And then other weird shit happens where things randomly get moved around like her security sensors will go off in the middle of the night saying that someone's there when absolutely no one's there. And one day she came home and the lights started flashing and stopped. 
I don't know how she still lives there, but it's really creepy. And that's the story. I don't know if it's that interesting. (laughs) She says, I think that's interesting. I think that's very interesting. That's crazy that um, she gets little messages from her husband. I think that's really sweet. I have a friend who um, always sees hearts, which I think is really cute. And it was something that her grandmother was obsessed with hearts and her grandmother passed away. And after her grandmother passed away, she started seeing hearts everywhere. And it would be over the most, it would be like the most random thing. And she would post them on her Instagram. She would um, be like walking on the sidewalk and there would be like a leaf that was perfectly shaped like a heart. And she'd take a picture of it. Or she'd be like at Sephora or something and someone smeared lipstick on the counter and it was like a perfect heart or like, you know, she just randomly always see little hearts made out of different things. You know, she'd be like peeing in a bathroom stall and there'd be rust on the door and it would be the shape of a heart. So I do think people try to contact us. I also saw a TikTok the other day um, that was really sweet. Uh, Of course, I have to bring TikTok into this because who am I if I don't? Um, Guys, I'm having so much fun on there. I'm a 33-year-old woman. I don't have any children. I don't have really... I don't really have enough going on right now with this quarantine. So I'm making TikToks and, it's, you know, it might be the end of me. Who knows? Um, Anyway, so I was on TikTok and I'm watching this old man and it was the sweetest thing ever. And the girl writes, you know, my grandfather, my, or sorry, my grandmother had passed away three weeks ago. And she told my grandfather before she died that she was going to come back as a butterfly. And the TikTok is of the grandfather sitting on the front porch with a monarch butterfly just sitting on his fingers for like the whole TikTok video, like a whole minute. And he's just talking to it. And she's like, there's no butterflies. We never see butterflies in the area. And this monarch butterfly came and just sat on my grandpa's fingers on his front porch. And my grandfather, grandmother told him that she would come back as a butterfly. Really sweet. And that's actually crazy. That reminds me of a story that um, Tommy told me one time, even though he swears he doesn't believe in this stuff. Um, hopefully he doesn't mind me sharing. I don't think he will because it's sweet. Um, he said right when his father had passed away, he was very emotional and he took some time to himself and went up to a cabin and rented a cabin to work on his album. And he was sitting on the front porch of the cabin in the middle of the woods by himself. And he said he was talking to his dad and a giant crow came and sat right next to him on the porch and was squawking at him and stayed there for like 15 minutes and he was talking to this crow and he still to this day like swears it was his dad um so that's very interesting i mean who knows you know i think people can come back in different ways okay so this is from i am letty on instagram she says this is my worst ghost story she says i have a lot of these but we'll go with the one when i was 13 years old it's been a while it's been a while for all of us, Letty. Even though I still feel like I was 13 like two minutes ago, and maybe that's just on me being immature. Okay, so one night when everyone was in my house sleeping, I decided to stay awake a little longer and just hang out in the living room. I was reading my book, and then I heard footsteps coming from my older brother's room. He didn't live with us anymore, and I just shrugged it off. The next thing you know, there's plates and cups being thrown across the kitchen. I jumped up. I got so freaked out. I turned on, I turned off the lights and ran into my room. About 20 minutes later, my room got so deathly cold. I tried, pr- tried putting on all of my blankets, but instead the ghost or spirit or whatever you want to call it grabs my freaking ankle and starts pulling me. I was so scared, but for some reason, I never wanted to scream and wake my parents, so I just kept holding on to the headboard and started saying out loud, you are not welcome in my room. You are not welcome in my home. Just go find peace. Leave me alone. It stopped pulling me, and my room got warmer, and I just drifted off to sleep eventually. The next morning, I had a bruise in the shape of a hand on my ankle. I told my parents, and when they saw it, It was bigger than my dad's hand, and it was a deep purple bruise. From that night on, ghosts never left me alone. Now I'm 26, and I still deal with them, but I've gotten used to it. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Whoa, I need to write back to this chick. Holy shit. Um, Okay, first of all, she's so strong for not screaming her brains out. I would be... I don't even, like... I don't even 
think I could hold it in. I think it just naturally, when I'm startled by something, I just scream. I don't even get a choice, mm -hmm. you know? But the fact that she just contained herself and the fact that when there was cups and stuff flying across the cupboard or across the kitchen, the fact that she was just like, I'm going to turn the lights off and go upstairs. I'd be like, I'd be the videotaping shit. I mean, I'm so surprised that there's not more ghost stuff caught on camera. And I know from the last ghost pod, a lot of you guys asked where that picture was of the little girl. I put it on the worst first Twitter and I retweeted it onto my Twitter. So if you look through my Twitter or worst first Twitter, you will see it. It's a little girl's face clearly in the window. Very scary. Um, I've had a couple of you send me pictures. Um, I just, you know, it's, hard for me to like post I'm gonna get I guess I can post them on Twitter I'll just have to keep posting them on Twitter but if I get any more pictures I will just put them on Twitter that's where they'll that's where they'll live sorry just drinking some chocolate milk because I'm seven I said holy shit I want to hear more about her ghost stories we'll we'll talk to her um this is from Mara Maguire she said ghost stories like haunted huh well I've got a lot for you well, my childhood house was built in 1917. Lots of things have happened in the old farmhouse. They used to use it as a funeral home a lot of the time. My dad's sister was killed by a coffee pot. Yes, a coffee pot. No joke. Not one coffee pot will work in the house. My dad's gone through three Keurigs. Ooh, I want to hear the elaboration of how she got killed by the coffee pot. She said, I've had dresses standing on their own dogs watching footsteps along the ceiling of the second floor as the chandelier shakes ghost hunters have come to our house the best was when i was upstairs and taking a shit and i thought my dad was at the door staring at me the whole upstairs has a long hallway and five bedrooms and no one lives there but my dad and me at this time so his bedroom was downstairs so yes i was taking a shit with the door open oops she said, I own that floor. <laughs> Get it, girl. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs along the hall and stop at the cracked door. Through the crack, I saw a large, bald, dark-haired figure. My dad, wait, a large, bald, dark figure. Sorry, not dark-haired. A large, bald, dark figure. My dad is bald. I thought it was him. I yelled to my dad to get out. I'm pooping. The figure walked away. <laughs> the ghost's like, damn, girl. The figure walked away. I went downstairs and asked my dad what he wanted, and he said he hadn't been upstairs. So there was just a ghost staring at me while I pooped. I moved, I moved out shortly after that. Oh, Mara. That's funny. I mean, it's funny, but it's also kind of like, can you imagine you're just taking a shit and a ghost just shows up? You're like, what's up, dude? Well, I'd say you scared me shitless, but I've already shit. So good job. Um, that's so awkward. Ghost watching you poop. You know, this is something awkward. And I'm sure like, I mean, we're all human. We all have the same brain in one way or another. I kind of think about this sometimes when my husband and I are having sex. I'm like, ew, like what if my grandma's watching me? Does anyone else have those thoughts? I literally can't help it. I just sometimes get freaked out. And I'm like, ew, what if my grandma's like watching me have sex or like, you know, someone in my family who's passed away, I'd be so embarrassed, you know? Oof. Like, can you guys not do that? I mean, they probably don't care. They're probably like, look at these dumb humans doing such stereotypical animalistic things. Ugh, so funny. Anyway, this is from Kelly Hayden. She said, this is a ghost story. True. I stayed in the oldest hotel in the French Quarter in New Orleans, and they gave my guy and I the most haunted room. Upon check-in, the man behind the counter asked, you're familiar with the room, right? I bravely nod and said, of course. We were three, we were three nights, we were there three nights, and the first two nights there was no activity. I wasn't even expecting any, but on our last night, the night of my birthday, I was woken up to my ponytail being pulled on. You've had your hair pulled, right? You can feel it, even after it's happened. So that's how I know it wasn't a dream. I slapped my fiance awake as I was freaking out, but he was on the other side of the bed with his back turned to me, sound asleep. He's not a prankster, so I know it wasn't him. I put Family Guy on the TV and slept with the lights on. That room is apparently haunted by a little girl who died of yellow fever in the 1800s. Her mother died soon after. I'm a really spiritual person and always debunk things, but this one I can't. I've had weird stuff like that happen where I feel... Uh, 
you know, like it's like you'll feel, and I don't know, maybe it's just like a phantom feeling, but like I'll feel randomly like a little tug or something here and there. And I'm like, what the fuck? I've even had it like while I'm sitting here, I felt like weird, but I'm just weird. So maybe that's what it is. Anyway, um, <laughs> this one's a short one. This is from Musical Sweetie on Instagram. She said, when I was a toddler, I had a toy that we had to take the batteries out of because it kept making noise. We took the batteries out and the teapot would still sing, a singing teapot. It scared me to death. And when I was little, I saw my great grandma and my mom. When I was little, I saw my great grandma. and My mom said that I was always scared of my closet after that. Those things happened at the same time. So I was trauma- traumatized until I understood the mean looking lady was an old relative who checked on my mom regularly after she passed away. Oof, mean looking lady. That's not fun. Okay, this is from Isabella Reeves. She says, here's my worst first ghost story. And by the way, I know some of these are like really riveting and then some of them are just light and fluffy. We try to like mix it up because I don't want to like, you know, have everyone listening to this podcast at two o'clock in the morning freaking out Um, because I know apparently a lot of my listeners do have anxiety disorders and this is probably not the best thing to be doing for you guys, but. Sleep with the light on. Say your prayers. God is with you. Um, This is from Isabella Reeves. So here's my worst first ghost story. I was probably seven when this happened. I was at my great aunt's house for Easter, and my dad sent me down to the basement to get toys for my little sister. My aunt used to make clothes to sell, so she had these weird mannequins down in the basement. Fuck that. I would be like, I'm not going in the mannequin basement. Well, one of the mannequins was facing the back wall when I came down the stairs. I made, sorry guys, I made it to the bottom of the stairs and as it, and it, wait, sorry, this is so confusing. She says, well, one of the mannequins was facing the back wall when I came down the stairs. I made it to the bottom of the stairs and as it was still facing the wall, it waved twice, but after it waved, it kept its arm up in the air. Seeing this, I ran back up the stairs where it shouldn't have been able to see me. As I slowly walked back down the stairs, its head moved to look at me. That threw me into a panic attack. As I was trying to run back up the stairs to get the hell away from that, my Easter dress that my parents got me got caught on a nail and my dad had to come carry me out. Long story short, mannequins terrify me now. Whoa, dude. I know. Why did we always have those frilly Easter dresses that would get caught on everything? Wow, the mannequin, that's really creepy. Ugh, mannequins are weird. They're weird. Like, ugh, the weirder thing was I used to work as a, I used to work in the King of Prussia Mall as a, as a, as a in the window live mannequin. Do you guys ever hear about that? Do you ever see one of those where you're walking by a window and it's actually a real person? It's fucking weird, okay? And I used to do that. I used to stand in the window and stand there and you just stand as still as you could for like 12 hours. I mean, you'd get breaks every like two hours to like sit down, drink some water, whatever, and get back up there. Um, it was fucking the weirdest job ever. They were, I mean, now they just have mannequins, but King Prussian Mall at one point was employing all these like model girls to stand in their windows. I mean, you'd have to smile because that would be, you just stood there with clothes on. Fucking weird. Sometimes I would scare little kids just because I was bored. I'd be like, <laughs> or I'd like blink at them or like wink at them. They'd be like, ah, (laughs) it's kind of funny. Um, Okay. This is from Daisy A. McGee. Ghost story. My mother and I were at a wedding held at Barnsley Resort in Adairsville, Georgia. The resort is an old plantation. There you go. And the house had burnt down, but the shell remained and they made a wedding venue out of it. Very beautiful. But anyway, they had a golf cart that took the guests to a parking lot at the end of the night. My mother and I climbed on facing forward and there was a seat behind us facing backwards. A couple climbed on there. We didn't think anything of it until we got into the parking lot. The golf cart never stopped between the venue and the parking lot, which was about a mile or so. We got to the parking lot and the couple that got into the seat behind my mother and I were gone. Not there. The driver, my mother, and I were all freaked out. They got on, but they never got off. 
It was only until a few years after that that I had learned that there was a couple that supposedly haunted this place. See, that's the thing. That stuff, it happens and you just think like it's a regular person and then like a couple minutes later you're like, oh wait, no, they're kind of transparent. That's not a real person. Like these people, these ghosts just got on the golf cart and you just get on thinking like, oh yeah, there's some people behind me. That's cool. And notice they were dressed from, they were like on the Titanic. Um, and then they're gone. And that's the thing. Like a lot of people do see ghosts and they don't even realize they're seeing ghosts because they just think it's regular people. Someone sent me a ghost video. I'm watching it right now. Ooh, two bright circles like cat's eyes. Creepy. Okay, so they sent me this ghost video and it's of a cat sitting on the bed and then there's all these weird little orbs floating. She said, if you look in this video, there's two bright circles on the ground and those are a cat's eyes, but the one circle is a motherfucking ghost. This house was so haunted, we'd hear the most inhuman knocks three in a row. To top it off, one night, the window was open, ranch style, in, a, in our ranch style home. In my bedroom, my, and my husband yelled and grabbed his gun because we saw a face outside the window. She said, we sold that mother, motherfucker quick and got out. Wow, this is from Al Laka on Instagram. She sent me a video. Of, I, I really got to learn how to incorporate these for you guys because, I, the, I mean, I don't really think, I don't know if I'm seeing what she, there's a cat on the, okay, so I'm describing the video. There's a cat on the bed and then it's night and you can kind of see a lot of orbs floating in the air, but they could be dust. And then you see two cat eyes on the ground and then there's like another little bright circle to the left of it. And she said, that's the ghost. Really creepy. Creepy, creepy. Okay, this is, a, this is a short one. This is from Alicia. She said, when I was at my mom's house one time, I was sleeping and I heard someone running down the hall. It woke me up. She said, next thing I know, I hear someone clearing their throat right next to my ear and my bed started shaking back and forth. My younger sister saw my older sister before the bathroom door shut. Thing is, my, oh. My younger sister thought she saw my older sister walk down the hallway when the bathroom door shut, but the thing is, everyone was downstairs and she was upstairs alone. Ooh, creepy. Some of them are really short, but some of them are long, which is nice. Um, this is from Fear It's Beauty on Instagram. She said, you asked for it. Worst first ghost story. I suspected my house was haunted as a kid, but no one in my family believed me. So, of course, I had to prove them wrong. I fucked with it for a while. I'd egg it on, and then one day things got a little weird. The ghost that did nothing started to terrorize me. I'm talking scratches, throwing objects, and then we saw it. A full figure, a fucking seven-foot-tall shadow in my room full body shadow and there was no way it could have been anything else one my little lamp and laptop were the only sources of light and two it was standing next to me i freaked out and my parents thought i was going crazy that's when shit really started to go down scratches turned into bites but it was only aimed at me my friend who's very sensitive to these things refused to come over as she said it was demonic so after hearing that, I still fucked with it, but nothing else happened. I remember my pets always acting weird too. My cat would attack me in the middle of the night, but he loved me every other time. My dog would stare off into the distance, but we figured she was just stupid. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> um, my birds weren't affected at all though. Well, birds are a little dumb. My friend, when she did come over, said that my room was a hot spot. I was susceptible because I was the youngest and, according to her, an indigo child. This thing, whatever it was, stuck around. It was weird, but I wasn't scared either. I don't think it follows me anymore. We've moved out of that house and nothing strange has happened since. Dude, if something was biting and scratching me, I'd be like, what the f I would be seriously sleeping between my parents. I don't care if I'm 45 years old. Like, I would not be staying in the room. I don't get how some people are just like, okay, I'll just deal with it. I mean, she said she egged it on, so maybe she brought this upon herself playing with Ouija boards and shit like that. But I don't know. If something was doing that to me, I'd be like, I would literally be sleeping with my parents. Like, I would not be by myself. That's fucking crazy. Whoa. I mean, she said her cat used to attack her. Maybe it was the cat that was biting you. I don't know. I'm not going to try to make up scenarios. 
Um, okay, this is from Nicole Sollers uh, on Instagram. Oh, she's so cute with her little baby. Okay. She says, my worst first ghost story was when I was 12 years old at my friend's house. We were waiting for our park district softball game. We were the only two in the house because her parents were at work. I had to take a poop. Wow. Everyone always has to poop. That's great. God, you guys are healthy. I had to take a poop. So I went to the bathroom and while I was sitting on the toilet, the doorknob started turning and the door slightly cracked open. I thought it was my friend messing with me, so I laughed and I said, stop, it stinks in here, stop. The door stopped and shut. I didn't think anything about it, but when I went back to the living room, she was sleeping and even had the lines from the couch on her face. 12-year-old me was like, what the hell? So I woke her up and asked her if she tried going to the bathroom when I was in there, and she said no. I was like, okay, that's odd. And then she proceeded to tell me that her great grandma passed away in the house. Till this day, she still says she didn't try going in there and we're 26 and 27 years old. Dude. Ugh. Scary. Whoa. This is a quick one. This is from Jillian Hurley. She said, my aunt's old condo had a teenage male ghost living in it. Little punk rocker. What's up? You guys got any weed? <laughs> That's the ghost. He's all, yo, you guys got any bud? <laughs> Just like a modern day ghost. <laughs> Did you guys hear that new weekend track? No? Why are you guys screaming? Um, This is from Jillian Hurley. She goes, my aunt's old condo had a teenage male ghost living in it. My mom and I spent the night in the living room, and I woke up in the middle of the night and saw him watching us sleep from the doorway. The next morning, my mom told me that she saw him standing behind me before she went and made breakfast. What the fuck? Y'all are way too chill about this. I'd be like, listen, bitch. Hell no. I'd be like, your motherfucker. Bitch, there is a ghost behind you. I mean, he got full face tattoos and look like a SoundCloud rapper. But he is a ghost. <laughs> Scary. All right, this is from Jenna Leanne, 91. She says, worst first ghost story. I was at my friend's duplex and she told me she thought the place was haunted before and I thought it was BS. I was sitting in the basement, of course, laying on the couch and all of a sudden two pennies flicked off the entertainment center at me. I feel like I read this one too. I was so shocked I couldn't talk or move for a solid minute. The hair stood up and I felt a slight breeze on my arm. Then I finally yelled her name to come downstairs. Never again did I sit alone in that basement or even in the house. I get chills every time I talk about this. Hope this is a good one for you. This is from Liz Ramirez, 93. She says, worst ghost story. Mexicans believe that when you have sleep paralysis, it's because someone dead is on top of you. So that's why they call it Querando se te sube el muerto. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't take Spanish, so I hope I said that right. Cuando se te sube el muerto. I remember one of my friends told me that it's actually because the ghost is on top of you trying to have sex with you. All right. She said, I was like 11 and I believe it. But is it just sleep paralysis? Mexicans have the craziest superstitions. They don't believe in the coronavirus, that, but they believe in seeing an image on a tortilla. <laughs> or not... Sweeping at night because it's bad luck. Wearing red underwear on a full moon when pregnant. And the worst one, wearing something metal while pregnant. I knew someone who hung a fork on her neck like a necklace. And another worst ghost story is that you always know at least three people that have heard La Lorna. And she must be traveling because everyone in Mexico has seen or heard her. I've heard about La Lorna. I don't really know about her, but that was kind of crazy. Um, I also have you guys sending me worst date stories. So if it's taking me a while, I'm trying to get the worst ghost stories in here. But there's also a lot of worst date stories in here. Um, let's see. Yeah, these are a lot of worst date stories. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to fight through them. I try to like organize them before I do this, but it's actually so hard because if I save them, they um they they don't always go to the top, which is unfortunate. Oh uh, boy. Well, if you guys want, we can keep doing worst first ghost stories. I mean, I love them. I think they're so interesting. 
So just feel free to um, keep submitting them and I will read them as many as I can. Some of these, um, you know, like I said, they do get a little bit um, mixed in with the worst first date stories because you guys do say a lot of worst first date stories, which I really appreciate. And those are so great. Um, But I definitely... um, I definitely like doing the ghost stories. I think that's really fun. And I think it's really fun for a lot of us. Um, okay, this is from Ben2317. This will be like the last one I do. We're an hour already. I know these are these go by so fast. Um, but send me more ghost stories. We'll we'll make this a regular thing. Worst first ghost stories, because I totally vibe with this whole thing. And it's a great thing to do in between not having guests on um during quarantine. You know, I'm trying to protect myself and other people. So I'm only having people on the podcast that have been quarantining or haven't been around a lot of people. So I'm obviously just staying home every day. So Um, this is from Ben 2317. When I was in high school, probably around 10th grade, we would go explore this abandoned sanatorium. The first time we ever went, it was a group of the four of us. It was about midnight. Now at the time I didn't believe in spirits or demons or anything, but that was about to all quickly change. As we were walking through this burned down entrance, you could, you could feel a presence and the hair on the back of my neck began to stand. As we were walking around, a spoon randomly fell from the ceiling and landed directly in front of me. When I looked up, there was no roof or ceiling. I was totally terrified. It just like fell from the sky. Now, one of my friends I decided to go with was going to taunt the already tormented spirits of the asylum. So he's running around yelling, fuck you ghosts. I fucked your mom. Why is there always that kid? Like, the worst. Honestly, just stupid things. We asked him to stop and he wouldn't. I remember my vision sort of blurring and then hearing a voice say, leave now. So we all ran out. My buddy still continues to yell dumb things. The next morning I woke up, something felt odd. Every picture was upside down in my house and the photo of my father was in the microwave with the eyes scratched out. And and warning scratched into the photo. I called my buddies immediately and they had the same things occur. Now the kid taunting them got a harsher warning. The crucifix above his door was upside down. Amongst pictures, the eyes were scratched out and single words written on them. Whoa, dude, really? That's kind of intense. This is from Ben. Ben, 2317. He's got pretty normal looking Instagram. Works on trucks. Don't see any reason why he'd make it up. It's pretty fucking weird, dude scratched out eyes come on that's scary Oof. okay i'll do a couple more you guys i have nothing going on anyway this is from melon stp ghost story when i was 11 it was in the morning and i was kind of just waking up you know you just lay in bed relaxing with your eyes closed i was hearing my mom cleaning the floor behind my door so i knew i was awake Suddenly, I felt someone behind me and my mattress started to pull down like someone was approaching me. But I was 11, so I hadn't had anyone in my bed. I swear, it didn't, I swear it didn't even take me a second. I got up so fast and opened my door. I scared my mom because she saw in my face how scared I was. And of course, when I looked at my bed, there was no one. For a long time, I was scared of the dark and, was, and wasn't able to sleep without my door open. I try to reproduce that feeling, but there's no way I could do it. I was completely alone. So it's like she was saying, basically, she was laying in bed and felt like the pressure of the mattress, like when someone sits down on your bed. I've heard a lot of ghost stories like that. That's weird. Um, This is from Kristen Bull. She said, I've had some crazy... I've had some crazy ghost stories. I work third shift alone and there's a ghost of a little girl. She would tug on my apron and untie it every night. I was in the bathroom and I heard her laugh. I've heard her I've heard about her before, but I had never heard her. It was the most horrifying, scary laughter I've ever heard. I have never peed so fast in my entire life. Then there there's the old man who knocks on the window and he knocks so hard you can see the glass bend. I've had my hair pulled when I go into the freezer. I've had them pretend to be my managers walking in and they make Sounds of my managers and keys rattling, but then there's no one there. I'm not the only person that this has happened to. My coworkers and I tell the same exact stories. My workplace is very haunted, and it's only gotten worse with quarantine. Whoa. 
Jeez, they're just mimicking the fucking managers and shit, rattling keys. This is from Hello Carrie J. She said, I see ghosts everywhere and all the time. Wow, that's fucking terrifying. She said, I always have. I could tell you so many stories. However, I will tell you when my daughter was two and a half years old, we went to my parents' house and she walked up to a chair that belonged to my father's mother and said, do you remember when I was your grandma and you were small and I would rock you in this chair and read to you about a slowpoke mouse? Those events actually happened, and I never spoke to her about it. She could barely speak herself being so young, but she managed to say those words. Whoa, do you remember when I was your grandma, and you were small, and I would rock you in this chair and read to you about a slowpoke mouse? I think sometimes before kids, like, full abilities have, um, you know, come about, I think that they are, like... I think sometimes this is the thing with reincarnation. We should do some reincarnation worse first. Um, it's interesting because I feel like when people are kids, they are their brains are still developing and they're still becoming who they are in this new world. But I think sometimes they remember the life that they used to have and they start talking about it. I mean, there's been multiple times when kids have said things about, you know, other people or they've looked at pictures and been like, there's me back in the day. And it's like someone's grandma from like eight, 1918. So I think it's like before your brain fully blacks out all the memories. I have deja vu a lot too, which makes me think, which makes me think that I've had a previous life. Also, my panic attacks happen so randomly and for like no reason at all. Like sometimes I'll just be watching TV and something will show on the TV and all of a sudden I'll be thrown into a panic attack and I'm starting to think like, oh God, is it like triggering something that's happened to me in a past life or something? I don't know. Who who knows? You know, you don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. We're just all going to find out one day. Okay. This is from Jay Doyle Mills. She says, ghost story. Almost 15 years ago, I lost a boyfriend to suicide. Sorry about that. She says, fast forward about 10 years and one of his good friends started dating a new girl. I became close with her and started hanging out at their place where the ex-boyfriend and I would hang out. She doesn't know anything about the ex, nothing at all. Somehow we got on the conversation of ghosts and she wanted to show me a video. She was Skyping with a family member one night and it was recorded. I watched the video with her and you can see a white figure walk by in the spare bedroom. That's where my ex-boyfriend used to sleep. I cry when I say it. It was so creepy. I've researched the video many times and the figure is as clear as day. I don't know if it was a sign or for him just saying hello, but it was intense to say the least. Wow. There's so many guys. Ghost stories. This is from Haley0121. Ghost story. My friend and his mom were telling us their house is haunted and bricks have randomly fallen out of the wall and strange things have happened. The most insane things they said is that they've spoken to to a ghost through a tape recorder we didn't believe him so we talked his mom into doing it because apparently she was the only one he'd speak to his mom started taping and asked questions are you here are you in distress did someone kill you and she plays the tape back for us and you can literally hear the ghost speaking back to her it's very faint but i could hear that shit clear as day and i got the hell out of that house i'm a firm believer in ghosts now yeah that's crazy Oh, man, there's so many guys. Okay, only a couple more. I know, I keep saying that, and then I just hear for three more days. Okay, this is from T. Maxwell, 08. Worst first ghost story. When my daughter was 18 or 19, she dated a drummer. She had ridden with the band in their van to a show late one night. On the way back, the guys had a bright idea to stop and to hike this widely known haunted burned-down house called Corpsewood Manor in Somerville, Georgia. It was just about 30 minutes from where we lived at the time. The house has a very sinister, evil past. To get to the house, you have to park on the road and hike into the woods. They locked the van and the driver had the keys on him. As they got closer, they all felt like they were being watched. They kept hearing something in the distance, but figured it was an animal. I feel like I read this one before. They stopped near the house by a stream and heard footsteps crunching in the leaves, circling them, but there was nothing there. They all had this terrible feeling and decided to go back to the van. 
They were still a pretty good ways from the van, but it was in sight. The headlights all of a sudden started flashing on the van and they started running to it. The engine started. Keep in mind, they had the keys in their pocket and it was locked. They ran to it and when they got there, the van was off like nothing had happened. They were all so scared they didn't want to go on to their own cars and drive alone. So my daughter asked if she could crash at the house till the morning. I thought she was just message it, messing with me when she texted me. But when they arrived the next day, they were all truly scared shitless. I think I've read that one before. This is from Emily is Tapley. Emily is ta- Tapley. Emily is Tapley on Instagram. She said, my sister has a creepy one. She was married and it was a super bad marriage. She woke up one night. I'm sorry to hear that. She woke up one night and he wasn't in bed. Their bedroom door was open and she could see all the way down the hall. The garage door is one that swings closed. As she noticed, it was open. The attic door is in the laundry room above the washer and she saw a dark figure come down from there. She closed her eyes and shook her head and opened and it was closer this time. She did this three times. She got up and followed it, and it led her to her husband, who was doing really awful things on their home computer. Whoa. Ew. Creepy. The ghost is like, look at your husband. He's being naughty. That's what you need. You need a fucking snitch ghost. Fucking snitch out all the bad people. Oh, there's so many. Now I'm getting all of them. Woo. This is from SR Martinez on Instagram. My story isn't from my first experience with spirits or whatever you may call them. However, it was the first time I encountered something with my son. At the time, my son, who was two, and his father and I were recently separated. One night, my son and I were watching TV, and I don't know why, but I got up to look out our front window. When I turned back, there was a dark gray figure standing close to him. I'm assuming only I could see it because he continued watching TV and seemed unbothered. The figure was tall, had horns, and the gray was light on top and turned darker all the way down, its body to black hooves. It was reaching out to my son, but when it noticed me, it faded away while looking at me. By the way, I didn't By the way, it didn't have eyes. In my head, I was freaking the fuck out, but I had to remain calm. I didn't like the vibes I felt, so I picked my up my son and took him upstairs for a bath. While we were upstairs, I could hear growling in my head. I sat with my son for a while while he played in the tub, and the entire time I felt like something was watching us from down the hall. After washing him and taking him to our room, he began to whimper. When I went to our closet to get his pajamas I asked him what was wrong side note my son started speaking very early and could use full sentences by this time he said I can't tell you I told him I'm your I can't tell you he he said I can't tell you I told him I'm your mommy you can tell me anything my son replied daddy just spanked me his dad was not visiting that night and lived 20 minutes away from us Thankfully, he didn't have any marks on him, but he was definitely scared at this point. We slept together with the closet light on, and I prayed myself to sleep. (sighs) This is crazy. She said, my mom was always really into spiritual stuff like palm readings and dream books, and she collected gems and crystals. This is from C.P. Tarvin on Instagram. Um, she said, I have no idea what I'm talking about, so I hope it makes sense. Anyways, when I lived with my mom, this is a quick story. She said, when I lived with my mom in high school, she told me that one morning she checked on me while I was asleep and there was a woman, a ghost sitting at the foot of my bed watching me. Like, that's it. She was a nice ghost. No follow up. Just a ghost woman watching me sleep. Have a great day at school. Thanks, mom. (laughs) Yeah, there's just like some lady sitting on your bed last night watching you sleep. Hopefully that doesn't uh, freak you out too much. Okay, so this is from M.M. Morgan F. 620. She says, so my ex-roommate's mom was a medium. She had warned me that my roommate had a male ghost latched to her ever since she was a little girl. My roommate at the time worked part-time at a daycare. She came home one day and told me how a little boy had seen a ghost while brushing his teeth one night and it petrified him. His teachers would have to take him to the bathroom and he refused to take a nap since this happened. After hearing this story, I asked my roommate more details about the ghost that was latched to her. She told me that she couldn't remember certain stories, just the one that her mom would tell her. 
That night I fell asleep in her room watching Netflix. We were woken up in the middle of the night to the loudest crashing sound. It was so loud I thought a tree had fallen through our roof. When I turned on the light, her freestanding mirror was shattered on the ground. We would hear laughs, and at one point I had felt sleep I had felt sleep paralysis and many other ex- unexplained things. So scary. Oh my god, this is so scary. This is from Bella Lou 311. She said, I was young when I had my first baby and I was living with my boyfriend. The baby had a bassinet in our room and we always leave a light on so we could see her when we woke up at night and so I could see where I was going. One night, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see my boyfriend standing over the bassinet just staring at our daughter. Then I turn back over to go to sleep and see his ass is actually still in bed. So I have no idea what just happened. And she would always look at certain corners of the house as she got older. I'm so glad we're nowhere near there anymore. I'm also not saying ghosts are real or not, but I just try not to talk about them because I feel like it manifests them. Whoa. Creepy. Oh my God, you guys have sent me so many. If I didn't read yours on here, please resend it. Make sure you definitely send it. Okay, this is from Nicole Leon Leonotti. She said, I have a few stories about my old house, definitely haunted. When I was a child, I used to see a man-shaped thing at my house. The first time was when my dad and I were at the garden and he asked me to go inside and grab his lighter. I ran inside the house and as I was leaving, I saw that thing in another room. I froze and looked and looked at it. It looked like a man, but it was totally black. It stayed there like looking at me a few seconds and then ran into the room. I got back outside running and screaming. I told my dad what I saw and he went inside and looked everywhere thinking that maybe there was a thief but he obviously found nothing. In those same years, I used to wake up in the middle of the night feeling like someone was there standing in the dark looking at me. I woke up one night sitting on my bed grabbing a big... I woke up one night sitting on the bed grabbing a big doll by its hair, and another night I woke up standing at the top of the stairs looking down. I almost fell. Lots of other little incidents happened, but I don't remember anything important until my brother turned six and he started seeing the same man-shaped thing. He saw it several times and I remember him sleeping in our, in our parents' room for a couple months when he was 12 because one night he saw something that scared the shit out of him. The last time that something happened, it was a few years ago. I was alone at night in the house and I was about to fall asleep when I felt scratches in the mattress right below my head. I told myself I was crazy and closed my eyes with all my strength until I fell asleep. The following night, I was still alone and the same thing happened. There was more than one, sorry, same thing happened. There was more than one scratch and I couldn't sleep the whole night. The worst part that was during the night when I checked if there was something under the bed before going to sleep, I found nothing. I was already 18 the last time, so I was no longer a little girl and was definitely not imagining these things. I even have a photo I recently found showing the dark shape in a mirror. Whoa. Ask her to send the photo. Anyway, guys, this has been really fun. I have to record on Tommy's phone, so I better give him his phone back. Um, Send the photo, Nicole. If you guys have more ghost stories, um, send them to me, please. It's hard for me to read them off of Instagram because for some reason, like, Instagram, uh, I don't know. It just, like, doesn't, I don't know. You can send them to me on Instagram or you can send them to the email in my um, in my bio on my um, on my Instagram page. There's an email address. You can send that to that. I, that usually goes to my manager, but I will tell him to forward me all the ghost story stuff. So I am so glad that uh, we were able to do this. I'm so sad that my friend wasn't able to come, but we ended up making a cool pot of it anyway. And thank you guys all so much for your support through this. And I hope you're enjoying this. And let me know any other worst topics you think we should get into. Like worst first time having sex. Like worst first whatever. I mean, we could do so many of these. And I can do a lot of solo pods. So I'm not worried about it. And I just, um, I hope you guys are all staying safe. And being kind to each other. And taking care of each other. And that's it, right? And wash your hands. And wear a mask. Okay. All right, everyone. I'm signing off. I love you. 
Be safe. See you next week on Voice Fighters.